This tutorial is the result of a collaboration with Hardbeast. You will learn how to create close combat mechanics like this one. So we are going to focus on the animation of the weapon and the collision part. The demo is open source and it's a bit more complex so you can see how I've created reusable characters and weapons that share a common script but that works for both the spear and the character's sword. Close and ranged attacks are quite different so to learn to do the latter you will have to head to Hardbeast's part on his channel. You can find the link on the description and on the screen. Big disclaimer, this video relies on a development build of Godot 3. You must use a recent build to run it uh, and if you are using Godot 3 beta or later, the editor might be a bit different. To download a recent unstable build of the engine, you can head to Bintray. Kalinu has a page set up where you can find daily builds. On the right side of the screen, you have a list of versions with the date every time. Click on one of these to find all the builds. Don't pick the latest one as sometimes all the builds are not available yet. The one from the day before is best. Head to the Files tab on the menu and you will find all the files for your system. You'll have Linux, then the Mac build, and finally the Windows build. I invite you to grab the last one in general, x86-64 and the zip file, so it's the uh, non-installer based version of Goto. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on the sword. The sword inherits from a scene called Weapon, which you can access by clicking the Open in Editor icon in the Scene tab. The sword has an animation player and this one has an attack animation. It looks like this. The animation controls the motion of the sprite but also of the collider. That's one of the engine's biggest strengths. You can create complex weapons, animations, etc. all using its built-in animation system. Then we will head to the script tab and we will work on all the code you can see down below. All the code that has to do with detecting collisions and the code that is specific to the weapon itself which allows it to change its state but also to change animation, to attack and to tell the character when the attack is done. To get started, download the project. You will find a link in the video description. In the attack demo with Hardbeast folder, you will find an end and a start subfolder. The start subfolder is the one you want to use to follow the tutorial. Import it in Godot and in Godot 3 it will automatically open. Here we are in the project. We first have to open the sword scene in which we will work. Press Ctrl Shift O to open the quick scene picker. So you can start to type the name of the scene to filter it. We are looking for the sword.tscn scene and you can open it by pressing enter. Here is our sword. It's an area 2D node so it can detect collisions with other bodies. It has an animation player which is going to control its animation. It has a collision polygon which I prepared for you to detect collisions and the sword sprite. Fairly simple scene. We're going to create an attack animation that will control the game mechanic. So the attack animation is going to animate the parent sword node it's going to move both the collision polygon and the sprite at the same time. To select the animation player node to open the animation tab, we can expand it a little to have a bit more space to work with. Then select the sword node to start working on it. In the animation panel, you will see the corresponding channels light up. By default, there is a setup animation and we want to work on an attack animation. The animation currently comes from its parent scene. Let's open it by clicking on the open the parent scene in the editor. 
you can see that it is a sword. I used another sprite just so it's clear that it's not the same scene. You can see also in the node tab, the nodes are not grayed out. And we have an animation player with the exact same animations. Let's head back to the sword scene. We don't want to modify the existing animation. If we do that, we're going to have a problem. It's going to modify the animations of all the scenes that share this resource. So Godot has the concept of nodes that belong to a particular scene, and these nodes can hold resources. An animation player holds animations that can be shared by many animation player in the project. For our unique weapons, we don't want that. We want each to have their unique animation resource. So we are going to make the animations unique to this node. Click the animation player and in the inspector, click on the object property icon and you can select the make sub resources unique option. This will create a unique copy of our animations that's not shared by any other scene in the Godot project. Let us delete the attack animation with the dustbin icon. We are left only with our setup animation and let's recreate a new attack animation. Let's start with the sword nodes animation. At the top of the viewport, you can click the little lock icon to deactivate it. The rot icon should be blue, which means it's activated. When you press the insert key, you will insert new animation keyframes. If you don't have a track, a line here for the rotation, Godot will create it automatically. It may ask for confirmation when it does so on your screen. Press insert at zero seconds to insert a first keyframe and then drag to 0.4 or 0.5 seconds on the timeline and press insert again to insert a new key. This defines the start and the end of our animation. 0.5 seconds is good for an attack animation. So we can change the length at the bottom of the panel to 0.05. I also invite you to change the step to 0.05 and press enter. This changes how the cursor steps when you move on the timeline. And last but not least, you can drag the zoom slider to the left to zoom in on the timeline. Let's talk about gameplay animation. The sword is going to swing over 180 degree like this. For an attack animation that's controlled by the player, you don't want any anticipation. You don't want the sword to go back before it moves forward, unless you want a heavy gameplay, a bit like in Dark Souls. In our game, we don't want that. We want the attack to happen instantly or to be very fast. For a fast attack, you want the swing to last between 0.2 and maybe 0.4 seconds if it's a bit heavy. Click and drag to 0.2 on the timeline, and then you are going to animate the rotation. Be careful with the direction of the rotation because it's going to change how the animation behaves. If you rotate in this direction, counterclockwise, it's going to animate counterclockwise and vice versa. We want to go clockwise. Go a bit farther than the final position. Okay, we don't want it to be exactly 180 degrees. We're going to do a bit of a larger swing and press insert. You're going to see the line disappear. It means that between the first and the second keyframe, the values are different. Now drag to see if the value animates correctly. It doesn't, which means that we have to check the rotation value in the inspector. Scroll down to Node 2D, expand the transform category and look at the values. The problem is that we start with a negative rotation of 100 degrees and Godot registered still a negative value going down. You want this to be positive instead, so select something like 90 and click the key button to insert a keyframe. And now the sword should rotate in the right direction. 
We're going to overshoot a little bit. You can check that the value is now going in the right direction and press insert again. Now if we go to the end of the animation, the sword goes back. We don't want that. So place the cursor on the last keyframe, then drag over the second keyframe to select it, right click and duplicate the selection. You will see a line appear which indicates that the value doesn't change anymore. So when you have a swing animation like this, to give it a bit of punch, you want the attack to overshoot a little bit and pop back in place. So when you swing a real weapon, this happens as well. It's going to overshoot a little bit and come back. So right after the second keyframe, rotate the sword back to its resting position and press insert. We also want this to be the last value on our timeline. So redo the copy and paste operation and now press shift D to play back the animation. It will be hard to see on the video, but on your computer, you should see how you get a little extra pop with the sword overshooting its target. The next step is to change the transition between the first and the second keyframe, because right now it's linear, which means that the sword moves at constant intervals between the two frames. Select the first keyframe, then head to the bottom right of the panel and click the last icon, which lets you edit the keys individually. You want to head to the transition tab and click and drag to the left to change the easing or the transition from this to that frame. The curve means it's going to go very fast at first and then it's going to slow down when it arrives to its target. So let's try the animation now. So you can choose either a curve like this or an inverted curve, which means the sword will accelerate to its target. This gives a heavier effect and this will induce a little bit of lag in the gameplay. Something very subtle because the animation is still very short. It should add a bit of weight to the sword. I prefer it to go the other way so the attack feels really instant in the gameplay. Next up, we want to add some extra visual appeal to the animation. And to do that, we're going to change the scale of the sword while it's swinging. We will do that on the sprite because we want the effect to only be visual. So select the sprite node. Still down to the node 2D class, we have a scale property. Insert a keyframe here around let's say the middle around here we're going to increase the scale and we'll do so manually in the inspector something like 1.2 or 1.3 on both axes may work you can also do a non-uniform scale with a bit less in the x-axis so it doesn't extend too much but a high value on the y-axis so it's a bit large be sure to press the insert key icon so you insert the key. And you can see on the swing, we're going to have a fairly sizable sword. And now we need it to reduce its size as it's moving towards its resting position. Drag to select the first key, place your cursor on the uh, middle of the timeline, right click and duplicate the selection. Now if you play the animation again, you can see the sword scale up and down and you'll want to drag on the keys to change the timing of the scale effect a little bit. You want to get something that's quite subtle in the end. You can see it's only lasting for 0.1 second, but it adds a little extra punch to the animation. The last two bits will animate our gameplay or rather code related are going to change the visibility of the sword when the attack is done. Let's select the sword node again. In the inspector, you'll want to head down to the canvas item and expand the visibility section. Place your cursor back at the start and click the icon to insert a new track. 
When you have a value of a checkbox like this one, the tracks will work a bit differently. Godot will not interpolate between the values, but will just change the value when the time cursor reaches a certain keyframe. So we just want to go to the end of the animation, uncheck the visible state, and click on the add keyframe button. The sword will be visible for the duration of the whole animation, and at the end, it will stop being visible. By the way, 0.5 seconds is maybe a bit long. We can lower the duration of the anim to 0.4 maybe. Let's try this. The extra time on the timeline where nothing happens anymore is just so we get a bit of a hold. For one, it prevents the player from attacking again because the animation length is going to control the interval between attacks and it leaves the player visible at the end swing position so it's visually a bit more clear what's happening. We want to do one last thing, it's to animate the collision detection. By default, our area 2D will not be monitoring. So before we add a track, let's deactivate the value. Then click the icon to create a new track. And with the cursor at the end, it will bounce the object back to the non-monitoring state again. Drag the cursor to the start of the timeline, activate the monitoring value and insert a keyframe. So now if I drag on the timeline, look at the inspector, you can see the monitoring value deactivate when we reach the end keyframe. We are controlling collision detection from the animation. So all the info we need that we could do from the code is encoded in the animation. We don't have to care about toggling the visibility and the collisions on and off from the code. We're done with the animation, the first half of the tutorial. Now head to part two, link on the screen in the description to take care of the code.